Now, you may have heard that all bees die after stinging. Well, actually, only the honeybee does. When any bee stings you, it simply inserts its stinger into your skin. In the case of honeybees, however, their stinger is made of two barbed lancets, giving it rougher edges that can act as tiny hooks. Because of these lancets, when a honeybee inserts its stinger into the skin, it can't pull the stinger back out. And that doesn't stop the honeybee from trying, though. The second they try to take off, not only is their stinger pulled out, but the muscles, nerves, and parts of their digestive system attached to it are torn out of their backside as well. It's a nasty way to go if you ask me, but there's an even more tragic element to it. When honeybees sting insects, as they often do when bugs try to attack the hive, they can remove their stingers just fine. It's all down to the amount of fiber in the animal's skin that causes the stinger to lodge. Those barbed lancets are designed to dig in as deep as possible, and when it comes to a mammal's fibrous skin, there's no removing that stinger without ripping it out. So those poor honeybees have no idea that when they sting us, the impact will kill them. But back to us humans, what impact does a bee sting really have on our skin? Well, bee stings inject a venomous toxin called melatin, which gives the sting its painful effect. And if you're allergic to bee stings, it's actually its melatin that you're allergic to. The toxin causes redness and swelling at the site of the attack, and since bee venom dissolves in water, it's able to spread around the human body with ease. If you weren't aware, 60% of the human body is water, so there's a lot of spreading to be done. Now, if you are ever stung by a honeybee, you must remember to remove the stinger immediately. Alongside those muscles and nerves, the pulsating sacs of melatonin the honeybee leaves behind will continue to pump venom into the skin until they're removed. So you better pick them out as soon as possible. The longer it's in there, the more melatonin is injected, and the itchier and more swollen the area will get. As this poor guy found out when a bee stung his tongue. Ugh, I'm reaching for the ice just thinking about it. Sounds painful. But you know what literally can't hurt? Hitting those like and subscribe buttons down below. All done? Great. Well, the average person can tolerate around 10 stings for each pound of their body weight. That means, discounting an allergic reaction, the average adult human can withstand roughly 1,000 stings, whereas a child can only tolerate up to 500. Have you ever wondered how a bee makes the decision to use its stinger? Well, to answer that question, we first have to understand pheromones. A pheromone is a chemical or a mixture of chemicals released by an organism that affects the behavior of other members of the same species. So, it's information communicated mainly by an organism's sense of smell. The idea that there are chemical messages floating around us all the time may sound a bit crazy, but pheromone signaling like this is essential to a bee's survival. For example, a primer pheromone causes long-term changes in the physiology and behavior of a bee. Yep, a chemical signal alone can literally alter a bee's body during development. Whoa. But a releaser pheromone causes a rapid change in behavior. So, alarm pheromones, which are a type of releaser pheromones, are emitted immediately after a bee stings something. This alerts other bees to something like a threat entering the hive, instructing all those that can sense the pheromone to attack the intruder. But when do they know how to stop? They found that bees base their decisions about whether to sting or not almost solely on the amount of this alarm pheromone in the atmosphere. In addition to this, they learned bees hold two internal thresholds that measure the pheromone's level, one that tells them when to begin stinging and one that tells them when to stop, almost like an internal thermometer, but for violence. These pheromones can also help the bees determine the extent of the threat they face, with more pheromones in the air indicating more danger. As such, the bees work out the level of danger via the level of alarm pheromone in the atmosphere. So the more an intruder is stung, the more bees come to fight it off. Considering a single colony can consist of more than 100,000 bees, that's one fight you definitely don't want to be on the wrong side of. Killer Bees Back in 2019, it was estimated that your odds of kicking the bucket because of an allergic reaction to a bee sting was just 1 in 59,507, 
or 0.00168%. Whew, most of us can breathe easy. Except, those are your odds if you're faced with regular honeybees. Your odds of surviving dramatically decrease if you're faced with the Africanized bees of North and South America. These are bees that were taken to Brazil in 1956 by scientists attempting to develop a honeybee better suited to a tropical climate. The African bees were placed in quarantine, but 26 queens broke out. The queens then began breeding with native Brazilian bees, resulting in a species of ultra-aggressive, ultra-lethal mutant bees who have formed hives all across the Americas. Now tell me that's not the best villain origin story you've ever heard. These Africanized bees are very defensive and will fight back with all guns blazing, or more accurately, all stingers stinging at even the smallest provocation. I'm not joking. This species have fatally injured more than 1,000 people, with victims found with 10 times more stings than European bees. Not only that, they've been known to chase people for up to a quarter of a mile. Now this scarily high death rate isn't because Africanized bees have a more venomous sting than others, it's that they attack in huge numbers, with reports of swarms reaching a terrifying 800,000 bees. I suppose the only question now is how many stings a person can withstand before the worst happens. Bees only sting humans if we approach their hives or threaten them with aggressive or reckless behavior. If a bee is hunting for pollen, they'll leave us alone, unless we handle them roughly or step on them.